الأخوات والأخوات مرحبا بكم إلى درس اللغة العربية لغة الجنة السلام عليكم and welcome to our Learn Arabic show Right, so today I would like to start our class um, with another verse from the Quran So if you open your Qurans to chapter 51, uh, verse number 47 It says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء بينها بأيد وإنا لموسعون Meaning, here is the translation, we have built the sky with might and indeed it is we who are its expanders. So you notice that you will find verbs in the sentence. I just want to pick out the verbs and the, look at the grammatical aspect of this verse. So first of all, you'll find wasama'a. You'll find here on top of the alif, we have a hamzatul, uh, hamzatul wasla. Qatar, which is not being pronounced. It is silent. So we don't say wa sama We say wa sama Why? Because of the presence of the Hamzatul Qatar. And then we notice that seen here has a tashdeed on top. And this is because we said that seen is amongst the Hurufu Shamsi. It is one of the sun letters. Therefore, the definite article al will not be pronounced. So we pronounce it as wasama'a. Then bainaha, meaning ha is referring to it. What is it in this verse? The sky. It's referring to the sky. Bainaha bi'aydin wa inna. Inna meaning indeed, making it more, uh, when we say indeed, when we say inna, it means it's true. It is obvious, right? So wa inna la musi'un, who are its expanders. Musi'un meaning expanders, right? So now this verse actually tells us that the earth is expanding, okay? And this fact was not known in the primitive science of the seventh century, of course, that the earth was expanding. But you find uh, one of the physicists has written, um, his name is Stephen Hawkins. He has written it in a book, A Brief History of Time. If you look it up, he says that this fact discovery of the expansion of the universe was one of the most greatest intellectual um, resolutions of the 20th century. And you find the Quran has said this. This fact was found out in the 20th century, but the Quran had already said about this scientific fact 1400 years ago before the discovery of a telescope, right? So you find this fact in the Quran. So of course you will find many messages in the Quran. You will find scientific facts in the Quran. You will find, you know, uh, rules regarding inheritance and everything. You will find inspiration from the Quran. And of course, you will find many scientific facts that have been discovered later on in the later um, centuries by scientists, right? So of course, our topic for today now um, will be, of course, uh, the command tense, which is uh, the fi'lul am. So our topic for today is fi'lul uh, am, meaning the imperative tense or imperative or command. Right. Now, the imperative or the command tense will obviously take a different, a completely different form from the past tense, the fi'lul madhi, and of course, the present tense, the fi'lul mudhari. So we'll be looking at the fi'lul um. And of course, this fi'lul um only applies to the second person. The imperative only applies to the second person. Of course, we also have, in Arabic, we also have imperative for the third person, but that, of course, um, only takes place when, you know, you add the letter lam to the beginning of the tense. That's the only time it can take place with the third person. But for now, we will be looking at the imperative, but only in the second person, right? So for example, I have my root verb. My root verb says kataba. So kataba means he wrote. This is fi'lul madhi, past tense, right? Meaning he wrote. So kataba, he wrote. Then we have the present tense of kataba is yaktubu, right? 
Of course, I'm just taking the masculine um, present tense, iaktubu, meaning he writes. Now, what will happen to the command tense is what you have to do is look at the second radical, okay? This is the first kaf, that's the first radical, the second radical, the third radical. But look at the third radical in the present tense form. So the third radical in the present tense, sorry, the second in the present tense form is the. That is the second radical. Now you look at the vowel on top of the second radical, you notice it is a dhamma. So the vowel on top of the second radical is a dhamma. Therefore, what will happen in the command tense is the alif, of course it starts with an alif that will carry um, a dhamma. So this will carry a dhamma, it will be uktub. Okay? So this second radical carries the dhamma. And of course, you cannot have any word that starts, that starts without a vowel. So you need to have a vowel. So this alif is being supported by the hamzatul wasla. That was kat'a. This is hamzatul wasla. So this alif is being supported by the hamzatul wasla. And of course, it carries a dhamma. Why does it carry a dhamma? Because you notice that the second radical in the present tense form carries a dhamma sign. Now let's look at another example. Say we have dharaba. So uktub, of course, meaning that you are masculine, right? This is for you, a masculine, singular, right? So, dharaba, okay? Dharaba meaning he hit, right? He hit. So, this is past tense. This is fi'lul madhi. Now, write it in the fi'lul mudari form. It's going to be yadribu. Yadribu, right? Now, again, look at the second radical. The second radical of this word is ra. So this is my second radical. And the second radical, you notice, carries a kasra. The second radical carries genitive. So even the alif here, therefore, will carry a genitive. So yadribu becomes idrib. So you see, I have taken the kasra from here, and I have put it there. You always look at the second radical in the present tense format, not the past tense, in the present tense format. So yadribu, idrib. And you notice that when you look at the command tense, always you should notice that the last letter always carries a justive, okay? So here I have a justive, and there also I have a justive sign. But there are some cases that even if you look at the vowel in the second radical, the command tense will not correspond to that vowel. For example, I have uh, say I have the word arsala. Okay. Now arsala means he sent. Okay. Of course, you will tell me, but the fi'lul madhi that we had done, we never had any verb that was starting with alif. We only had, you know, the three root verb, like kataba, jalasa, daraba. But sometimes there are some words that I cannot just say rasala, because it will not make, grammatically, it will not make any sense. Why? Because this word here needs the support of an alif. There are some verbs, they actually need the support of an alif. Therefore, that's why I have put an alif. Of course, the verbs we had covered were only three root verb. For example, like kataba, jalasa, fa'ala, etc. Right? But this word, you notice, it has an alif. So if you come across a verb in the Quran that starts with an alif, then do not get confused. Again, it is a verb, and of course, it's in the past tense. So arsala, meaning 
he sent. So the present tense for Arsala will be um, Yarsilu. Yarsilu. So this is the present tense. He sent, he Okay, so I have he sent, he sends. And of course, the present tense for, um, I'm sorry, the command tense for this will be. Now here, the vowel will not correspond to the present tense. The vowel, it will not correspond to the present tense, uh, second radical. Of course, you are expecting to see a kasra there because this is the second radical. Look at the vowel of the second radical, but you will find that it will not correspond to that. So what will happen here, instead of kasra, I will find a fatha. So I'll have arsil. Okay? So you note in some cases when the you, you find that the second radical of the present tense format has a kasra, sometimes instead of following a kasra like we saw in dharaba, dharaba, yadribu, idrib, right? But sometimes it will take a fatha. It will not take a kasra. Let's look at another example. Say I have anzala. Remember this verb, anzala, we had done it in one of the Quranic verses, wa anzalna al-hadida, and we sent down the iron for the benefits of the human beings. Anzala, meaning he sent, or uh, to, he revealed. He sent down, or he revealed. This sent is not uh, exactly similar to this. This means like he revealed, or he sent down, you know. So anzala, meaning? He revealed. So the present tense for Anzala will be Yanzilu. So Anzala, Yanzilu, Anzil. So I have Anzala, Yanzilu, Anzil. So basically, there are some um, root verbs. Even if you check the, the second radical of the present tense form, it is kasra. But however, their um, command tense will take a fatha. OK, one last example. See, I have the root verb jalasa. Right, now jalasa is a three root verb, of course, so it will take the same rule that we have learned. So jalasa meaning he said. This is past tense. Now convert it into present tense. So jalasa will become yajlisu. Yajlisu. Then look at the second radical. The second radical, lam, it has. A kasra. The second radical lam has a kasra. He sits. So of course, even in my command tense, the hamza will carry a kasra. So I have ijlis. So you notice here there is a kasra. Here I also have a kasra. So in most cases, it will follow the same rule. If the second radical has a kasra, command can have a kasra or it can have a fatha. If the second radical has a dhamma, the command will have a dhamma. So we have looked at you masculine singular. Now let's look at the other um, second person. So the other second person that we have here, we have looked at um, you masculine singular. Now we look at the dual. Say we have you feminine singular. Let's finish off with the uh, singulars first. You feminine. Okay. So say I have the word yak. Of course, I take my present tense. Yak tubu will become. to be. So what have I done here? I have added 
I have added a ya at the end because this is for singular. If it is uh, you masculine singular, then same. It will be uktub. Okay. If I have dual, say I'm talking about two masculine dual two. Then I will have uktuba. Okay, so um, yaktub for then for feminine it becomes uktubi means I'm commanding a female. I'm commanding you female write uktubi uktub. I'm commanding you male second person to write. Then we have dual is uktuba. Then we look at, um, and of course, this dual is for both mu'annath and mudhakkar, and to feminine. Uktuba is for both masculine and feminine. Okay. Then we have plural masculine. Of course, this is all in the second person. So plural masculine, we will have uktubu. And for plural feminine, we will have uktubna. Right? So I can say antum uktubu meaning you all masculine right i'm ordering you i'm commanding you right antunna uktubna okay uh, anta uktub anti uktubi antuma uktuba antum uktubu antunna uktubna so this was the fi'lul am and inshallah we'll be continuing with our um, further topics, of course, we'll be looking at more examples and more other topics, of course. So thanks for listening and have a nice day.